we're going to go ahead and bring out our guest of tonight's show. He's a retired chief of police for the Detroit Police Department and also a retired chief of police for Detroit Public School Community District, chief of staff for Triumph Church. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Chief Ralph Godby. What's going on, brother man? Man, it's going well, Kenya. Said love and good to be uh, with you. Man, enjoy uh, the back and forth. Uh, the topics are hot. Hey, I hate you. And uh, 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 congratulations, you just made a very special announcement uh, today. And like, this is the pro pro probably one of the, like you've had a lot of jobs uh, throughout the <laughs> year, uh, but this might be one of the biggest uh, responsibilities uh, that you have. So tell know. folks what you just uh, made the announcement about. Well, today announced that I was running for United States Congressman for the 13th Congressional District uh, in Michigan. And uh, I mean, tremendous, tremendous show of support uh, great uh, announcement today. I'm just super excited. And, uh, you know, some people will question my sanity <laughs> uh, for trying to get into D.C., especially the way D.C. politics is now. Yeah. Uh, but to be totally honest, that's what the reason why that's what inspired me uh, to take a run at this vacant seat uh, that once was held by uh, the late John Conyers. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of history in the 13th district seat. Uh, Kenya, I, I would love to get some of that uh, Stacey Abrams vibe up here. <laughs> no, you will, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I say that in all sincerity. I mean, she really has set the, the, the standard, uh, and, and not only just for going for those that you know classically vote, uh, but really educating people about the process and registering voters and empowering voters and showing people the, the you know the power of the vote. I mean, nobody ever thought that Georgia was going to be a blue state. <laughs> I mean, just never did, you know, uh, especially, you know, they had projected Texas flipping a long time ago. Yeah. Still ain't flipped. Mm -hmm. uh, but Madam Abrams, uh, she is a beast to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just going to share this. It ain't none of my business, but I think the Democratic uh, National Party should have made her the party chair. Because she's demonstrated, she you know, and that's nothing against Jamie. Uh, but I know uh, Whip Clyburn, you know, is a very powerful man in Congress, yeah. Uh, and Jamie is a tremendous, tremendous leader. Uh, but Stacey really needs to be in the conversation on how uh, yeah. we keep the house and keep the Senate because she she's just done stuff that just doesn't, you know, add up in the normal political environment. Yeah. Uh, she defies that, and that's the kind of innovation we need, especially yeah. for Black America, uh, for us yeah. to really. Uh, have a seat at the table because they say if you don't have a seat at the table you're probably on the menu probably on the menu and that's what we're fighting against in detroit um uh, kenya uh, we stand a chance out of 13 congressional districts and two senate seats of having zero black representation in washington dc um and i i can't sleep at night with that <laughs> I, I can't uh and i'm not saying i'm the only black that's qualified but i know i'm qualified and I'm going to do everything I can uh, to run a good race and to make sure that that seat uh, stays not with just a black face, uh, but with someone that is really going to fight for black issues. I, I used to tell people, uh, Kenya said when I was chief of police, I'm a black man that happened to be a cop, not a cop that happened to be a black man. And I'm acutely aware of my responsibility uh, to, you know, to equity for how our people are treated. Uh, you know, Rosa and Malcolm and, and, and Megger, they didn't do what they did for black folks and get in spaces to continue to treat our people the same way. Yeah. Um, but what I found out real quick, I'm, I was one chief of police out of 18,000 in the country. Yeah. Mm. So I want to take, you know, my, my talents. <laughs> I'll start to sound like LeBron, take my talents. <laughs> <as healthy. laughs> I want to take my talents uh, to DC <laughs> because not only do I want to do this for, um, the people in the 13th district, mm -hmm. uh, but also it's only 435 people that really shape um, what is, you know, going to happen yeah. the trajectory of how black people are treated in this country for years to come. And the more black voices experientially that they take out of the mix, that's less people, you know, advocating for the George Floyd and policing act and doing those things necessary to keep the pressure on. You know, yeah. to be there with Raphael Warnock when they tried to get all off of voter re voter registration and voter yeah. uh Reverend Raphael Warnock took him to church, and yeah. and it's back it's back on the agenda. 
so you know representation matters so that's uh, that's what motivates me but i ain't trying to make this you know just completely serious and about me i know it's a serious subject but um even in doing this i want to enjoy uh, uh, uh the ride uh, because it, it's a lot of good people out here that just have not been represented i, I think at the highest level that when you get behind those doors are you still going to advocate for the people that put you in dc yeah and, you know the indoctrination that i come from uh unbought unpaid for um you know if you want to spend your money on my campaign i take every dollar you can give but that's not going to change what i have to do to make sure uh that black and brown americans have a fair shot and there's equity and not just black and brown americans but it's really becoming a class issue yeah because, poor you know it, it's poor people said because and can you because you know the ironic part is the republican party has sold a bill of goods uh to a, a very marginalized white america when the middle class is eroded and gone yeah the mm -hmm. wage gap between the poor and the rich when you look at the one percent that holds 90 percent of the country's wealth and we're the richest country on the planet mm -hmm. so that means that 90 percent of the people if we exercise our right to vote and understood our political power we could put in check some things that make sure and i'm not talking about socialism i'm just talking about making sure that eight hours work get eight hours pay and pay yeah. at a level that i could send my kid to a daycare because 15 dollars is not enough it's not enough uh, okay you know, that's that that's the that's the floor yeah I mean, 15 dollars an hour but we keep talking about it every year we move forward if you know the uh, the, the, the 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 um formula for time value of a dollar you start to do the math that 15 dollars is still the 375 you know when i was a kid mm -hmm. you know, so we really have not you know they're doing a 10-year challenge on instagram do a 10-year challenge on the uh uh, uh, uh on the wages. minimum wage. and wages <laughs> it's going backwards you know it yeah. ain't aging well yeah. so you know those are the kind of fights we got to fight um one of 435 but you know i feel like me and god we're a majority and if okay. you just start doing the right things and modeling the right things and yeah and, and being unbought and unpaid for uh at a point it, it's it, it really becomes a matter of good versus evil and, mm. and what's good for the greater you know mass um, our political system has been corrupted to the core, you know, yeah. with you know the way we finance campaigns. Uh, these, you know, uh, speaking of that, like you, you, so uh, we have a um, a millionaire who also has his eyes on yeah. uh, the uh, 13th district that yes. John Conyers uh, used to sit in, and uh, I think he said that he gonna spend a lot of his money uh, just to get get off rip so he can start getting the campaign, and we know campaigns are about money. So how? Yes. Yes. how how are you going to fight somebody who already said he's going to put a couple million dollars into his campaign just off rip? You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, in Kenya, this name may, you know, I I'm, I'm old enough to remember a guy named um, Jeb Bush. Mm -hmm. Jeb Bush had a boatload of money. And Donald Trump didn't spend no money. Right. And, 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 and ran him out of the race. So I don't want to acquiesce to the fact that this guy says he's going to put up $5 million of his own money. Uh, you still got to get out there you got to touch the people you got to talk to the people and you have to earn their respect in the ballot box yeah so Especially in detroit in detroit man uh, you know <laughs> well, any black city any black exactly exactly now yeah, the thing is it. you know the, the enemy uh from within is much greater than the enemy from without and yeah. you know who who, he, who he's gonna be sliding money to you know to get support that's a whole different conversation but we're gonna call them out like an umpire yeah. and you know I, I you know i'm 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 unafraid you know to call folks out for what it is and you know experientially this man has never done anything for my community that i can put my hands on mm. and if you got five million dollars at your disposal like that that you're gonna put up in your personal campaign to say you want to represent the interests of a district that's majority black um, you got to show me hmm. because that five million dollars you know i go to a church called triumph church that takes millions of its own dollars that it raises from the congregation it feeds hungry people 
Safety pays mortgages for those that are losing their homes, right. helps people to keep from getting their gas and electricity cut off. Uh, people that haven't had cars, you know, giving uh, them an opportunity to drive, walk in the church and drive out with a brand new car. I mean, right. who does that? Somebody that cares about the community. So if, right. if, if this candidate really cared about my community, um, I would I would even have more um, respect if two and a half of that million you put up to make sure that um, kids had laptops when the schools were closed on the pandemic and that they had hotspots or they had internet access. Show me that you did something with that five million dollars. But just to put five million up because you want to win the race and you want to buy the race, people in Detroit, we ain't for sale. Yeah. We're not cut like that. Mm -hmm. And that's the argument we're gonna make. And uh, if I prevail as the candidate um, that you know jumps, you know, into a competitive race with this guy, that's gonna be the drum beat. We ain't for sale. No uh, doubt. Mate, you got to be able to speak, you know, truth to power. You got to be able to demonstrate to the people that I represent and I plan to represent that. You got some you got some skin in this game. Yeah. I had 25 years in Detroit Police Department putting my life on the line for these for the for the people in the city of Detroit. Um I put another two years into leading the Detroit Public Schools Community District Police Department. I've been a preacher in this community for 22 years, mm -hmm. doing weddings and funerals and going to pray for those that are in help, visiting people in jail. Kenya, when I was chief of police, and this never made the news, I went into uh, Ryan Road Correctional Facility and I met with the inmates. I went into Jackson Prison and met with the inmates to let them know that if you, when you get out of here, because the majority of you are coming out, we want to welcome you back into the community and we want to help you be productive in this community. Yeah. And those are the kind of things that, you know, to me, that's criminal justice reform. Yeah. Um, you know, not just locking black men up and throwing away the key and don't give them any kind of way to come back and be contributors to our community because those are that's somebody's father, that's somebody's uncle, that's somebody's brother. That when he comes out, you know, we don't want an emaciated man because we have lost so much energy from black men in the community and we have so much going against us. Our queens don't have kings that are whole. Mm. And we've got to fight to restore the pride of what it means to be a black man. Yeah. And systemically, we've got to speak truth to power. This is my favorite saying, power concedes nothing without a demand and never has and never will. Yeah. And that's what the fight. We got to demand. We got to put a demand on this thing. Hey, will we right. always win? I don't know. But it won't be because we're not marching. Yeah. <laughs> we're not voting. We're not praying. Mm -hmm. We're not um, protesting. Whatever it takes to bring attention to the plight of the disenfranchised, that's the kind of fights we got to lead. No and, doubt. You know, one thing about being in Congress, it's not just a district you represent. Anytime there's an issue that affects Black America or the disenfranchised or, or, or the transgender community, the LGBT community, any marginalized community, as a, as a, as a U.S. congressperson or a senator, you have a, a platform, whether it's in Detroit, if it happens in Atlanta, if it's in Fulton County, if it's in New York, Chicago, L.A., Harlem, Miami, wherever there is an injustice, you have an opportunity to weigh in on a national scale. I mean, yeah. the people of Haiti, I mean, our brothers and sisters in Haiti are down there in abysmal conditions. Yeah. One of the most rich um, resourced areas on the planet yet one of the poorest countries in this hemisphere mm. we got all people of african descent fighting for fighting for haiti you know yeah. I, don't, I don't i'm not mad at anybody else to fight for their native lands but we got to fight for the liberation of black people not only here but where they are uh, disenfranchised across the world racism Absolutely. to america it's prevalent in america but it ain't unique and we got to take the fight to the world so that bully pulpit uh that you know we would have uh that's what i want to do is just fight for our people and leave a legacy okay. that you know um you know that you know a young kid in detroit on mac and be with and i said yeah. not 
the meaning of Mac and Bewick or Linwood in Philadelphia or Joy Road. Yeah. You know, the areas that are not the prettiest areas, the areas that have been, you know, um, you know, we mm -hmm. talk about they don't want to defund the police, but they defunded our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. they defunded our schools, they defunded our mental health facilities, they defunded our, our clinics and our, our our pharmaceutical ability. They they defunded everything else. So what I'm talking about is shifting those funds back to make sure we take care of the people that can't take care of themselves. No doubt. Hey, Chief, let me ask you a quick question. We got yes. people that are chiming in. And right now, everybody, you're just Everybody Mad Live podcast. Pastor Ralph Gobby with us from Triumph Church. Um, Educate Woods said, what do you think about Mitch McConnell's comment implying that African-Americans are not American? I don't know if you heard about that or not. I did. I saw it. I saw the quote. And to me, it's not a surprise. Uh, you know, it's what you call a Freudian slip. <laughs> because if you listen to what the Republicans have been saying, the reason why they say the election is stolen, not because they can't count, it's because they think we don't count as Americans. Yeah. Um, what they're saying is, is the only reason Donald Trump lost is because you counted the votes of black and brown people. So Mitch McConnell saying that doesn't surprise me at all because, you know, he said, you know, African-Americans vote like Americans. Well, black people vote like Americans, which implies that we ain't a part of the system. Mm -hmm. And that's what this Republican Party has done. And, and let's be clear, if the House flips, if the Senate flips, we got to even be that much louder. So you got to have strong voices, especially if we slip into the minority in either of those uh, chambers of Congress. Right. And, you know, you got to keep the pressure on. So even if we're outvoted, um, relative to you know how you know gerrymandering goes and how they're you know trying to make sure that districts are not um, uh, 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 going to be uh, won by Democrats. I mean, let's be honest; they've they've done everything they can in multiple states to you know take over the vote because they can't win doing it the right way. Just policy for policy, yeah. vote for vote, they can't come up with a better mousetrap. So I said today, like they, or was it yesterday when he did a speech uh, where he said that they're not running on anything. They they don't they don't have any plans for the country. They just want to block the plans the that we have. So like, I guess uh, like from my standpoint, like how will you fight that? Because I think the biggest thing with Democrats, um, and uh, we are obviously uh, knowing that you are running for the Democratic yes. nomination uh, for that. But but obviously uh, here it usually means that you're going to win the uh, win the uh, general or whatever. But um, in running for that and knowing what we're thinking about and knowing that people like how how do you get people motivated uh to actually go out and vote because i think now we're we're in a time to where we're not seeing some of the things that we thought was going to happen happen a lot of people don't know the a b and c's of politics and how it yeah. works so what will you do to kind of fight for those things that we desperately need well one thing you got to bring some energy and passion to this thing I mean, this is not something that you just do because you want another job or you want another notch on your, you know, your resume. You really have to be passionate about it and give people a reason to hope. Because my my, my late father used to always say, well, when, when hope is gone, the man is dead. And if you rob people of hope, what's the motivation to go out and vote? Yeah. So, number one, you got to be able to articulate your vision and you got to do it with passion. Because if you don't believe it, you can't make nobody else believe it. And then secondly, you've got to be able to demonstrate to people that you are going to fight for them. Yeah. And, and, and you've got to be, you know, just, I mean, just so persistent in what your issues are. And the thing about, you know, the reason why I have hope, even though, you know, they're projecting that the house is going to flip is, you, you know, regardless of what you think of Bernie Sanders, people thought he, he was he was a fringe person. But the progressive wing of the party has really taken over the Democratic Party. Um, so don't don't underestimate what a loud voice can do and a passionate voice can do when you speak to the issues that people deal with every day. And when you talk about student loan debt, when you come out with $100,000 of debt and you can't even find a job for $15 an hour, Somebody's selling you something that ain't true. Yeah. And, you know, when you have a Bernie Sanders or a progressive wing saying, look, we got to cancel the student debt. It's one of the biggest debt um, uh, issues that people deal with on a day to day basis, especially yeah. when it can't produce what it promises. It's selling a false dream. 
when you have people that go to trade school that are master electricians that are are, are master plumbers master you know are, are carpenters um and they make i mean tons of money and, and have never stepped foot in a uh, institution of higher learning yeah but they have a skill because i don't care if you go to yale you go to harvard you go to princeton and you got an electrical problem you need that master electrician you know, so yeah. when you start to look at hey, that, go YouTube and watch that video. <laughs> Man, I, I can watch all the YouTube videos and we're I ain't touching no electricity. <laughs> you know, but I, I say that to say that we've got to start giving our people alternatives that make sense. College yeah. ain't for everybody, and we got to stop selling that pipe dream. Um, mm. That that's the you know that's the way out. That is a way out, but that's right. not the only way out. And I remember coming up in school, they would test us to see what our, um, you know, where our interests may lie. So you could start to, you know, move that young person in the right direction. Yeah. Something that, you know, they could, you know, possibly thrive at. And then, but, you know, even at that, we still have to restore middle class. I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's gone. And it's turned to the haves and have nots. And we're moving towards an oligarchy. We've mm. got you know, yeah. 10 billionaires that really are controlling, you know, the, the, the votes of 350, you know, the, 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 the trajectory of 350 million people. That, that's not the way this thing was intended to be. You know, the writers of the, you know, of the Constitution even contemplated, you know, making sure that we don't have monopolies. Nobody's really challenging these monopolies anymore. I mean, Facebook, I mean, they, they buy up Instagram, they buy up WhatsApp, then they control the, the 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 thought leadership in this in this country and in the world yeah you know, those those monopolies they, yeah. they they're dangerous they have to be challenged but if you if you bought and and that's who's funding your campaigns that kind of hamstrings your truth mm. uh, that's why I love the church I attend you know we don't we don't take nothing from nobody no doubt and that allows our pastor to really speak truth to power because you know, we, we we abide by the principles of, of of the Bible. Now, whether you are Christian or not, the principles work. Mm -hmm. I, I remember a book I read in graduate school called Jesus CEO, and it applied the teaching of Jesus Christ as if he were the CEO of a corporation and really translated into a winning organization. So whether you accept him, you know, for, for, for your salvation, you cannot argue that the principles work mm -hmm. and apply them and you do those things that are ethical that's right you chase yeah. the right things the resources will come no but doubt. we got backwards we want to amass the resources and then act like we're going to do something right on the back end but once you bought and paid for it, it it's kind of difficult to to you know to do that uh michael jackson moonwalk uh yeah. all those different issues that you promised your funders that you were going to advocate for Mm -hmm. Well, Chief, let me ask you before we wrap with you, uh, what's one thing that we can do to support you? What, what do you want people to do to support you? How can we get out and support you and what you're doing? Yes. Uh, our website is still up today, GodBeForCongress.com. Uh, if you're in the 13th district area, we need volunteers and we want to build that volunteer base. Um, the second thing we need, we need resources. Uh, so our uh, Act Blue account is set up. Hit that donate tab and if you could help us um you know uh, uh uh go up and and get some ads on tv and some ads on radio now uh, to talk about what we're doing uh because again five million that's formidable uh but it don't scare me because i i still think that the people when they rise up so i'm not asking for you know max donors but that five dollars here that ten dollars there anything you could do to really get a synergy behind what we're trying to do, um, we want we want to make sure that the same gentleman that wasted ten million dollars running for governor is going to blow another five million. Yeah, no doubt. Fact right there. So, uh, Chief, we uh, have uh, spent about twenty minutes with you uh, uh, throughout various topics, and you, to me, you've sold me. I, 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 <laughs> I like what you're saying. I like what uh, right. uh, everything what you're talking about. But as our last question, as we look at uh, some of yes. the questions from our audience and things like that, it's still going to be somebody that's going to call me and text me like literally what I got when I put my put um, the post on my uh, Facebook that uh, mm -hmm. 
oh yeah, we got Chief Gobby. He's running for Congress or whatever. So like first text, I ain't gonna show you who it was or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, you know he blah, 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 whatever. Right. Um, so relative to uh, when you left um, and retired from the uh, yes. police department yeah. and uh, that sort of thing or whatever. So um, I wanna just real quickly uh, speak to that and like yeah. kind of coming from a scandal um, and mm -hmm. kind of that situation or whatever, yeah. like how did that make you better and more mm -hmm. prepared to be a, be, be, be a man uh, in Congress? Well, first of all, uh, it was 10 years ago, number one. Uh, number two, I went through what a lot of grown people go through. I went through a divorce. And going through that divorce, I made some choices that you know I'm not all you know proud of, um, because you shouldn't pick up another relationship until you're in the one year. Um, so you know those are the things that happen. Um, but you know if anybody wants to do oppo research, I help you out. I'm a <laughs> sinner saved by God's grace. Hey, um, but if you balance the the work that I've done for the community, the commitment I've had for the community. Uh, I've apologized to the people I need to apologize. So, you know, for those that expect me to apologize to them personally, uh, it ain't gonna happen because um, I've made, you know, my reconciliation with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and those that I have harmed, you know, or had harmed uh, going through my divorce. Uh, I've dealt with that. Kayla Simone Grigsby, uh, formerly Kayla Simone Godby, uh, my daughter uh, and my ex-wife, the only two people I owed an explanation to. Um, so I, I, I take no pride in falling, uh, but uh, my dad said something that I always live by, only a fool trips over what's behind it. That's in my mm. past. And I have the capacity to serve. I have the um, resume and the pedigree to serve. And, you know, you know, I, if that person knows a perfect candidate, I would invite them to, you know, uh, vote for that perfect candidate because uh, I don't think Jesus coming down from his throne to run for uh, <laughs> no, <that's>... district. <laughs> uh, right. So, Ain't nobody know, perfect. Nobody's, right. perfect. nobody's right. perfect. And I don't use that as an excuse because I've held myself um, and nobody can hold me to a higher account for what I expect for myself than myself. But, you know, that's one of those things I'm done talking about apologizing for, you know, the people that uh, I needed to make um, amends with I have. And the most important person I can make amends with is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and he has forgiven me. Uh, and I, I will make mistakes again. Uh, not those mistakes, but I will make mistakes. Um, you know, we're all sinners saved by God's grace. But, you know, what I can commit to is nobody. And I anybody want to question my personal conduct at that period of time, uh, feel free to do so. But I dare you to question my work. And what I did for the community and what I did for policing when the Detroit Police Department was under two federal consent judgments and after seven years had made no progress. When I took over, I took them to 90 percent compliance in two years. Yeah. A constitutionally sound policing agency that respected the community and I gained the respect of the community. I stepped away from the Detroit Police Department because I did not want my personal issue to become the department's issue. So for me, the person of integrity, you should value the institution over your own personal, because I could have stayed in thought, but I made a decision that what was best for me was to make sure that my family was straight, uh, make sure that my life got in order and I made amends. Um, but, you know, that's not going to stop me from what I have to offer my community. That's right. That's right. You're getting a lot of uh, amens uh, from uh, folks out uh, here in the comment uh, section. Uh, so uh, definitely, uh, we are praying for your uh, success on this Thank journey. So uh, whatever we can do, uh, continuing on through this process uh, up until the campaign. The election is August the second. Yes. Um, so yeah, as much as we can do between now and then to kind of help you and kind of support you during this journey, because uh, one thing that we really believe in is people who have Absolutely. good, good, high character and. Since I've known you, like you, uh, you've always uh, uh, displayed a real um, uh, positive and supportive character. Like you've always been um, um, a man of your word and a man of integrity and that sort of thing. So uh, we are definitely uh, uh, very, very excited about what's going to happen real, real soon, whatever. So please, please let everybody Matt, know uh, how we can uh, continue to support you. I know you said your uh, website will yeah. be open soon. Got before Congress. Congress dot com. Uh, Instagram, God be for Congress. Uh, it's going to be a face, a Facebook page still, uh, God be for Congress. Uh, and Kenya. Yes, sir. Tell Miss Abrams to holler at your boy. 
<laughs> I will. Yeah. When I see her, I will let her know. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Yeah, cool. I love you. I appreciate you. Appreciate, yeah, great, you. appreciate, appreciate it. what you're doing.